Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fort Laramie High School, where tonight in the MLK Classic, the Marion Local Flyers take on the Springfield Shawnee Braves. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Tom Bonsassen and our entire WSN crew. And, Tom, what a great night of basketball we've had so far, and it gets even better now as Marion Local comes in 9-1, and 3-0 and in the MAC, and they're loaded at every position. Yeah, well, you know, four down, two to go, but it's been a lot of fun so far. And, uh, right, the size, of course, Jack and Happy, 6'9", junior, and 6'8", and sophomore, Austin Niekamp, that sticks out first of all. And then, you know, just always solid. Coach Gut Miller has done a great job of, continuing the winning tradition for the Marion local Flyers and always get a little bit of a slow start because of their football success. It's so right, it, right. I mean, it's baked in. They understand it. They know it's going to be part of the game. So really, you know, they're a team that even though we're just a little bit on the other side of the midway point, they're a team that's probably just starting to hit their stride. That's a great point. That's a great and, point. And, uh, because of the late start they often get, but, you know, they've managed to be successful with nine wins and one loss so far despite that. And, uh, you know, you would expect them to continue to get better and improve and, and be tough come tourney time as they typically are. And you take a look at Springfield Shawnee. They come in at 6-5, and 2-2 two and two in the Central Buckeye Conference. And, Tom, they are led by Zion Crow. The 6'4 senior is a fast-rising player in the state of Ohio, being looked at by a lot of Division II schools, and he can flat-out score the ball. Yeah, that's uh, what I heard coming in. I'm looking forward to watching the young man play. And... Uh, you know, the city of Springfield, a lot of good basketball played there uh, through the years. And, you know, I don't think they'll be intimidated coming in here and taking on the Flyers. The question is, you know, can they hang inside? Uh, I think it's an athletic Springfield Shawnee team, but they don't have the overall size that the Flyers do. Well, most teams don't, uh, especially <laughs> right. at the Division Four level. But, uh, you know, we'll see how that plays out. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for Springfield Shawnee. They'll start the aforementioned number one, Zion Crow. The 6'4 senior averages 21.7 a game. They'll go with number four, Desmond Hausman, the 6'1 junior at 1.5 a game. Number five, Cody Simon, the 6'3 junior at 7.3 a game. Number 12, Ricky Powell is a 6'2 junior at 5.4. And rounding out the starting five is number 32, Darian Dixon, a 6'2 junior at 8.2 a game. They are led by Coach Chris McGuire. For Marion Local, they'll come in and start number four, Luke Pullman, a 6'0 senior at 2.9 a game. Number 12, Tate Hess is a 6'2 senior at 6.9 a game. Tate, we've talked about him all football season long, the quarterback of the team. Number 15, Brandon Ike is a 6'1 senior at three point a game. And then you've got the big boys. Number 23, Austin Niekamp, a 6'8 a sophomore, and he averages 8.8 .8 a game. And number 33, Jack Kanapke, 6'9, 15.3 a game. And Jack Kanapke is one of the best big men in the state of Ohio. Yeah, of course, trying to follow in the footsteps of his brother, who Certainly a good high school career and then played well at the University of Toledo. So the Flyers will start on offense. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio Distributed Structure Pergola. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Flyers patient on offense as they look to get the ball down to Kanapke, down low. This is Brandon Ike with the ball up top. They'll swing it down to Austin Niekamp. Niekamp back to Tate Hess. Back inside to Kanapke and easily Jack Kanapke as he gets Darian Dixon on his backside and he scores the bucket to make it two to nothing on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Great low post position and then not wasting any time. Catch, turn, and finish. Here's Crow with the ball out top. We've talked about him all pregame. A high-flying senior can really score it. They'll swing the ball around. This is Cody Simon out top. Go back door to number 32, Darian Dixon at the top of the key. And they'll reset it with Pro up top. Three ball from the right side on the way, and it's good. Number 12, Ricky Powell, the six foot junior, knocks in the three ball. He only goes 5.4 a game. He's got three already. Yeah, nice feed. Again, Pro drawing attention, drawing eyes of the Marion local defense, was able to get his teammates in space. There's a, almost a near steal out top. They'll go back to Niekamp from the right side. Three ball on the way, off the mark. Rebound comes down. This is Simon with the ball out top. Thought about the three. A little dribble drive on the left side. And a nice play by Darian Dixon with the dribble drive on the left side. And he gives the Braves the 5-2 lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Took it right at Kanapke. Long left-hand finish. Nice kiss off the glass. And you're already seeing right now what you said earlier, Tom, the athleticism of Springfield Shawnee is they like to get up and go. 
get up and go and, and doing a pretty good job of getting in Marion Local's face defensively. This is Brandon Eink with the ball as he tries to go to the middle. And they're going to get a foul, number four, Desmond Hausman. That's going to be foul his first. Four, Desmond Hausman, his first, team first. Let's say a little hand check on the drive. Put the hand up on the hip of, of the dribbler, and you're going to get that call about every time. So sit back and enjoy this one, folks. We've got two contrasting styles here as Marion Lokes likes to keep it into a half-court set, and they're playing against a team that likes to get up and go. And here go the Braves again. This is Cody Simon with the lead. Kicks it back outside. Here goes the three ball on the way up. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Kanapke off his legs, and it'll go back to Springfield Shawnee. Yeah, you definitely see the quickness of the Braves. They're a little bit, they're a step quicker to the ball right now, whether it be a loose ball or a rebound. Springfield Shawnee comes in at 6-5, and 2-2 two and two in the Central Buckeye Conference. Offensively, they average 51 a game. Defensively, they give up 46 a game. They've got wins against Bell Fountain, two, uh, one of the bigger programs, and also they beat Bodkins earlier in the year. And Bodkins is a, a strong team again, so that's an impressive win. And I'm sure that, along with just the scouting report that Coach Gutmiller is going over, that they have many locals' attention for sure. Tried to go back into Kanapke as he kicks it back out. Ball comes back out. Darian Dixon rebounds the ball. Here comes Crow on the right side. Nice little shake and bake there, but he gets the ball back out to Cody Simon. Back to Zion Crow. He is guarded by Tate Hess. Crow with a little short jumper, and he knocks it in. There you see Zion Crow with a little dribble drive. Anytime you can create your shot like that, people take notice. Yep, first attempt, smooth-looking jumper. And you know, anytime you're in high school, you're north of 20 a game. Uh, Absolutely. You, you can score the basketball. That's a great point, Tom. Back into Kanapke. Kanapke guarded by Dixon, and wow, a lot of contact there. Kanapke misses the shot. And Dixon went down hard on the floor. They'll go back into Kanapke. He's guarded again by Dixon. Taking their time around the perimeter. Back to Kanapke, now on a low post. Turns to his right. Another, another incident there where they both go down. Yeah, he's trying to sell that contact. Yes, he is. And Ron Black's not yeah, buying it. <laughs> he's not. He's, he's not buying it. You're right. He just shook his head again the second time. So if he hits you, I'll call it. But you're not going right. to sell it to me. Ron Black, longtime referee and friend of mine, is down on the floor. And he's not buying that at all. And that, I mean, that's a tough deal for officials. There's sure definitely, is. It's not like they're not touching each other. But is it contact? Uh, to the point where you're knocking the guy, displacing the guy is what it yes, comes down right, to, right, right. is the term officials use. If, if you're hitting someone hard enough to displace them, that's an offensive foul. If not, you're not going to get the call, no matter how you try to sell it. Kanapke misses the first one, makes the second one, cuts into that lead. It's 7-4 to four with 4.15 to go here in the first quarter. 7-3, to three, excuse me. This is Dixon with the ball up top, guarded by Kanapke. He picks his own dribble up there, and they'll go back to Dixon. Dixon looks to take it around the perimeter. There's Simon on the left side, guarded by Kneekamp. This is Dixon with the dribble drive as he takes it in against Kanapke, and they're going to get Jack Kanapke on the foul, and Dixon's going to go to the line for two. Yeah, he's shown the willingness to shoot the three, and you know, just a, a little fake in that, and got Jack Kanapke to take a step towards him and use that to be able to get to the rim and draw the contact. Darian Dixon will go to the line. The 6'2 junior averages 8.2 a game. He misses that one. Marion Local offensively averages 53 a game. Defensively, they give up 43.2 a game. Their only loss was to St. Mary's earlier in a big matchup between Jack Kanapke and Austin Parks. In that game, Kanapke had 13 and Parks had 17. And we already saw Austin today, and he had a fantastic game in their win. Yeah, that would have been, been a fun night to watch those two <laughs> Absolutely. battle. Absolutely. Absolutely. 8-3 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. This is Hess with the ball, guarded by Simon. Hess tried to go in. He's going to, trying to kick it outside. They'll reset it with Braden Eink. Go back into Kanapke, and a nice move against the baseline there. Jack Kanapke, he knocks in another deuce. He's got five on the night. Impressed with Springfield's defense so far, though. They're, they're doing a good job on that end. Now, do they, you know, do, we haven't seen them go to the bench yet. Do they have depth? Can they stay out of foul trouble? Can they continue that for four quarters? But doing a great job of guarding so far. This is Dixon with the ball. Picks his own dribble up. They'll go back to Zion Crow. Back to Simon in the corner. Simon guarded by Kneekamp. 2.55 to go. Dixon up top. Shawnee Braves continue leading 8-5. to five. This is Crow. He's guarded out top by Hess. 
Crow takes him down low, and they're going to get Hess on the foul. And he misses the shot, so he'll shoot two at the line. Yeah, there's a, a savvy offensive player. Very, very. You know, going yeah. against Hess, who's a great athlete in his own right. And did a nice job that time. A spin move, the shot fake to get Hess up in the air and then draw on the contact. So Crow goes to the line as he misses the first one. Zion Crow on the year from the free throw line. He's shooting 71%. He gets to the line quite frequently, so you know what that means, Thomas. He goes in for contact, and you like to see that out of your lead guards. Put the ball on the floor and get to the rim. Uncharacteristically, missed him both. <laughs> yes, he did. Rebound there by number 10 for the Flyers. Mitchell Ranley in the game now. And with Kyle Ungren, number 30. Swing it to the knee camp. Back over to Tate Hess. This is number 30, Kyle Ungren, the 6'3 sophomore. And Hess almost traveled there as he kept his foot on the ground. Knee camp on top of the key. Swing it back up, three ball on the right side. Off the mark. Mitchell Ranley with the missed three ball, runs it down and gets his own rebound. And here comes Tate Hess and the Flyers. Hess goes to the rim, but he's fouled by number 12, Ricky, D Ricky Powell, excuse me. Powell kind of shakes his head, but you can't grab an arm like that. <laughs> That's going to be his first. They've spread their three fouls among three different players. Flyers with just two team fouls. So Springfield Shawnee leads eight to five. Two minutes to go on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Tom Von Sossen from the Marion, excuse me, from the MLK Classic here at Fort Laramie High School. A lot of play in the inbounds. Austin Decamp left it way short, almost. Almost worked out as a pass to Jack and <laughs> Right, Peter. right. He lost it out of bounds and stays with the Flyers. Tate Hess looking down low for Nat Kanapke. Excuse me, there's a three ball from the left side. Off the mark, Kanapke tries to go up for the rebound. Simon's grabbing it for Shawnee, and he'll get it out to Zion Crow, guarded by Tate Hess, which is a great matchup on the perimeter. You see those two athletes. Ed Beamer with the ball out top. Here's Crow with a little three ball from the right side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. They fire the ball down the floor to Neekamp. Neekamp takes it up. Misses off the rim. Dixon with the rebound. So an uncharacter miss by Austin Neekamp there. Yeah, nice pass. Nice catch. Everything but the finish. There's a miss there for number excuse me, number 11, Ed Beamer, who just entered to the game. There's Zion Crow from the left side as he misses again. So shots not falling right now for either team. With 106 to go here in the first quarter, Shawnee leads 8-5. Darian Dixon fighting hard in there, giving up some inches, but uh, he's battling down low. See how, again, can he continue this for four quarters? Especially going against the size of, of Knee Camp and Kanapke, of course. Two big wide bodies. Marion Local seems to always have size, always, Tom. Always. always. <laughs> I played against it. I know. Uh, absolutely. As, <laughs> as did I. <laughs> as did I. There's a three ball from the left side that goes off the mark. Kanapke tries to rebound it. Everybody jumping up. Zion Crow's going to come down with it. Gets it out to Simon on the left side. A little spin move there by Simon. Kicks it out to Beamer from three land. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Beamer gets the rebound. Back out to Zion Crow. So Springfield Shawnee hitting the offensive boards. Getting multiple shots at the glass. Yeah, they are. As I said, maybe, you know, just, a, well, they're an athletic team, and they're, they've been a half a step quicker to the ball here in this first period. Looks like they'll play for one. So Zion Crow is going to keep the ball out top. He's guarded by Mitchell Ranley. We're down to 13 seconds. Crow with the ball. Goes to the right side. A little hand check there by Ranley, and they're going to say he touched too much there. Yeah, that's a good call. He definitely impeded the drive. Got the hand up on the hip of the dribbler. Shawnee will have to reset from the side with just under 10 seconds left. There's no worse feeling in the world when you're out on top of the key and you're against a really athletic yeah. guard <laughs> and the clock's ticking down. So I, uh, I feel for Ranley on that play. Here comes Zion Crow at seven seconds. He gets a screen out top from Dixon. Simon in the corner, three ball off the mark. Man, local brings it down, and that'll do it after one after quarter of play from Fort Lormy. Shawnee Springfield Shawnee Braves lead the Marion Local Flyers 8-5. You're watching high school basketball. WOSN.
Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School, where second quarter action is just about to get underway here as the Springfield Shawnee Braves lead the Marion Local Flyers 8-5. to five. Danny Oberg, Tom Von Sossen from the MLK Classy here at Fort Laramie. And a good first half for the Braves, Tom, as they got out and did what they wanted on offense. Yeah, both teams, and both teams really playing hard defensively. Points hard to come by. Uh, quality looks hard to come by. And... You know, I think Springfield Shawnee is going to be very happy with that first period. Zane Mercer has checked into the game now for the Braves. Nice drive there by Dixon as he's contested by Jack Kanapke. And the ball goes off the mark and it'll go back to Springfield Shawnee. Yeah, Dixon is definitely uh, not afraid to take Kanapke, you know, particularly off the dribble. And, it's a great you know. point. You, you can tell they've worked on that this week. Mm -hmm. Miscommunication on the inbound. Dixon cut towards the middle. Zion Crow thought he was going outside and... Consequentially, threw the ball away. It'll be Marion local ball. So here come the Flyers on offense. This is Brandon Ike up top. He is guarded by <coughs> Beamer. Swinging around. Tate Hess with the ball. Good matchup out top of Tate Hess and Cody Simon. Skip pass to the right side. Thought about taking the three ball, but they'll move it around back to Hess. Napke setting a screen out top. Hess goes off the left side, falls down, and he travels. So good defensive effort there by the Springfield Shawnee Braves as they did not allow Marion Local to get the ball anywhere near the rim. No, they're not. You know, they can't break them down off the dribble right now. The Flyers can't. And uh, without that ability, it's tough to get good looks. There's a near steal as Beamer corrals it. He'll get it back to Simon. Back to Zion Crow in the middle of the floor. Thought about taking the jumper, but Dixon with the ball. Swinging back over to Mercer. Mercer with a little jumper from the left side. He knocks it in. Zane Mercer off the bench for two, and he ups the lead to 10 to 5 on the ultimate outdoor score. There's a turnover. Here comes Dixon up the right side. And everything going Springfield Shawnee's way right now. Beamer gets it over to Crow. Crow loses the handle of the ball, but he corrals it. He's guarded by Tate Hess up top. Luke Pullman is on Cody Simon out on the left side. Excuse me, the right side. Simon tries to go baseline, kick it back out to Mercer. Off the mark, Zion Crow with the rebound, throws it back in. Simon corrals it, goes up with his left hand and knocks it in. Yeah, again, I'm repeating myself, Danny, but they're just... They're quicker to the ball right now. Yeah. Every loose ball, every 50-50 ball is coming up Shawnee's way. You, know, you're, you, you can repeat yourself because you're telling the truth. Yeah. That's exactly what's going on, Tom. And they are really guarding on the perimeter and causing them all kinds of problems getting the ball down to the low post. This is Hess from three land on the right side. Goes off the mark and a great box out by Dixon on Kanapke. And here comes Zion Crow at the left side. Everything going their way. And, you know, Marion Local can't hit a three right now to try to loosen that defense up. And, you know, Shawnee's uh, put themselves in good position early. Here's Simon guarded by Nikan. They go inside to Zion Crow. He's going to take it up against Kanapke off the left side. So there you see the size from Jack Kanapke really bothering Zion Crow as he tries to go into him. And did a good, a good job of staying vertical, just using his size and making Crow throw something, you know, not quality up over the top of him. Ricky Powell checks back in, and they got some quality minutes there from Ed Beamer. A nice job off the bench by that young man as he gave number 12 Ricky Powell some valuable minutes. Just a somewhat careless turnover. You, boy, you hate to you fight to get the ball back and then you throw it right back to him. But again, it's uh, the pressure defense from Springfield Shawnee. This is Zion Crow up top. He swings it over to Mercer. Mercer gets it to Simon. Simon back to Powell. Powell back to Mercer. And there's a steal. Nice job there by Tate Hess as he's going to take it up. And almost misses it, but knocks it in. And they needed that. They had scored in about three minutes, Tom. Yeah, they did. They sure did. And just a careless cross-court pass by Mercer. More or less just giving the Flyers two points there. 434 to go. Springfield Shawnee leads 12-7 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Tom Von Sossen from the MLK Classic here at Fort Loramie High School. And we've got a dandy here with two really good teams in Marion Local and Springfield Shawnee. This is Simon, guarded by Nikant. 
Dixon from the three land, and he knocks it in. Darian Dixon knocks in a three ball, and we've got a timeout on the court. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 4.10 to go. Shawnee leads 15-7. We're back here at Fort Army High School with 4.10 to go. The Springfield Shawnee Braves continue to lead the Marion Local Flyers 15-7. Danny Holbrook, Tom Von Sossen from the MLK Classic here at Fort Army High School. A great day of basketball. 12 teams participating in the second annual event here. Nice crowd on tap and a great facility and just a good day of basketball. Oh, it absolutely is. Oh, Marion Local. Yeah, they get Kanapke inside for an easy two. Good set coming out of that timeout, yeah, Coach a, Gutmiller. Yeah, absolutely. Coach Gutmiller ran a great set there, and Kanapke easily scores the bucket, and he narrows the lead to 15-9 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Here comes Crow with the dribble drive, and that's blocked by Hess. A great job by Hess. Three ball on the way, and it's good. Ricky Powell knocks down the three. Ricky Powell's got six on the afternoon, and that young man only averages five a game, so he's over his average. And Zion Crow, plus 20 a game, just two, but getting good contributions from the others are Springfield Shawnee. It's Austin Neekam from three ball land. It goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Simon, but they're creating offense with their defensive effort right now. This is Simon, guarded by Neekamp. Go back to Zion Crow, guarded by Tate Hess. 3.05 to play here in the second quarter. This is Dixon with the ball. He's got six on the afternoon. This is Simon, tries to dribble drive, go back into Crow and a nice cut. Zion Crow knocks down the short little jumper off the glass. He's got four on the afternoon. It's 20 to nine on the ultimate Crow. outdoor scoreboard. Yeah, nice catch. You know, Simon kind of scooped that from short range and. Got it on top of him in a hurry, but nice catch. That's a good finish. <laughs> nice job by Tate Hess. The 6'2 senior creates his own shot, goes off glass, scores the bucket. He's got four on the afternoon. It's 20 to 11. This is Dixon up top, guarded by Kanapke. Dixon tries to take him off the dribble, throws the ball away. So uh, an uncharacteristic turnover so far from what we've seen. Springfield Shawnee is taking care of the ball. So a break there for Marion Local. Dixon's been good, and they use, they're using him out, out front offensively, thinking that Jack Kanapke isn't going to want to come out and guard at 20 feet. But that time just threw it away. Marion Local chance to cut into this lead a little bit. Hess thought about taking the three. He's guarded by Simon out top. Swing it across to Neekamp. Neekamp dribble drive baseline. He's cut off there by Zion Crow. And Simon keeps Hess from going baseline. So nice job by the Braves of not allowing that baseline dribble drive. Swing it back over. Three ball from the left side, and it's good. Mitchell Ranley, the six-foot junior, knocks in the triple. He's got three on the afternoon, and it's 2014 with 1.38 to go. Yeah, Mitchell Ranley's man defensively uh, sagged down in to help on the lob play, potentially to Kanapke, and that left him open. Here we go. And here's Kanapke with the steal, and he misses the dunk. Jack Kanapke misses the dunk after a great steal and a great defensive effort. One fifteen to play here. Shawnee up 20-14, so an opportunity wasted there. There's a three ball from the left side. That's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Neekamp. He thought about outletting and saw uh, Kanapke go down the floor. Doesn't throw it down, so they'll set it up on the offensive end. Push down to Neekamp on the right side. This is Neekamp. Little turnaround there and a nice job. Austin Neekamp, the 6'8 sophomore with a nice little turnaround. And we've seen him miss a couple threes, but first time operating in the post. Marion Local climbing back in. Here comes Springfield Shawnee. This is Dixon with the ball. We're at 35 seconds. Springfield Shawnee leads 2016. This is Crow with the ball up top, guarded by Hess. We're at the 20 second mark. This is Simon. He and Crow back and forth up top. They'll go back to Simon. Ricky Powell in the corner. Crow with the ball. Down to five seconds, back to Simon, back to Powell. Powell with the dribble drive, they lose the ball, and that'll do it. At 
after one half of basketball, the Springfield Shawnee Braves lead the Marion Local Flyers 20 to 16. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Loramie High School. We're at halftime. The Shawnee Springfield Braves lead the Marion Local Flyers 2016. And let's take a look at both teams here. Tom and Springfield Shawnee and Coach Chris McGuire have done a terrific job of ball pressure on the perimeter, limiting Kanapke's touches, and really, you said it earlier, out hustling the Flyers to lose balls. Yeah, they are. They've, they've done an outstanding job defensively the first half. Actually, Marion Local probably feeling okay. This game was 20 to 11. That's a great point. You know, the field goal is really hard to come by. And, they were able to get the last five of the half, a two and a three to, to get it within four, but you know they certainly need to try to change some things offensively here in this second half, get things going because Springfield Shawnee pretty much had their number defensively in the first half. The, the good news is Marion Locals defended pretty well themselves, especially on uh, Zion Crowe holding him to just four points. You know, averages over 21 a game, so they haven't been able to get away from the Flyers offensively. It's been a defensive battle, and you know, maybe a, any team can get on a run. That might be huge. Season 18 of the Sports Report continues Friday night. Join Patrick Kamler for full or for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around all season long. Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Danny Holbrook, Tom Von Sossen from Fort Laramie High School, the MLK Classic here, a full day of basketball. Wrapping up our coverage here with Marion Local and Springfield Shawnee. Marion Local come out, try to push the ball down to Kanapke. Kanapke guarded by Dixon. This is Tate Hess from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Missed shot again. Hess will corral it as he runs it down. I think I might have got away with a little shove on the weak <laughs> side there. But I, was, I saw that. To get the offensive rebound, but then missed the putback. Three ball from the right side. Off the mark. So there's two threes in a row that they've missed. That was Luke Pullman with the miss, the six-foot senior. This is the shot. We'll go back to Springfield Shawnee. So, of course, Springfield Shawnee, as you said earlier, they want to get Zion Crow back in the scoring books. He's only got four on the evening, and he averages 21 a game. Yeah, not a lot of great looks. Credit, you know, Tate Hess for certainly a big part of that, doing a great job on him defensively. Tate Hess has done a fantastic job on Zion Crow, hounding him all night. This is Dixon with the dribble drive. Kick it out to Mercer. Here's Zion Crow from the left side. He misses everything on that shot. And it looks like Simon steps out of bounds to go back to the Flyers. Yeah, got a good look that time. Teammates set him up well. Uh, number 12, Ricky Powell with a good drive and dish. Had a clean look from the corner, but airballed it. Here comes Tess and the Flyers. This is Pullman, swings it over. Tate Hess back to Neekamp. Tried to go high low to Kanapke, and he throws the ball away. And another unforced turnover there. And the Braves will take the ball again. Up 2016 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. A good idea. High low takes weak side to help away if you're from the defense, but just didn't execute it. You see Dixon tried to cut across, and Kanapke met him and chucked him. <laughs> Not going to face cut me. <laughs> This is Dixon in the corner, guarded by Kanapke. This is Simon out top, guarded by Austin Neekamp. This is Zion Crow with the balls. He backs down his defender. They'll swing it around. Three ball on the way, off the mark. That was Ricky, Ricky Powell with the missed shot. And they throw it away again. Intended target was Jack Kanapke. And uh, turnovers are becoming a problem for the Flyers they right They are. Now. Tate Hess. Yeah. Kanapke was certainly open going up the floor, and Tate Hess recognized that, but you, know, you got to see the eyes of the person you're passing to. Kanapke never got his head around to see that pass coming. Kyle Ungren steps in, the 6'3 sophomore. He'll come in and give Jack Kanapke a breather. Twenty sixteen here in the third quarter is the... Springfield Shawnee Braves continue to lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Danny Hilbert, Tom Von Sassen from Fort Laramie High School. This is Dixon with the dribble drive, and there's a steal on the left side. This is Hess. He tries to go up on the left side. Excuse me, that was Brandon Eink. I misquoted that. Brandon Eink tries to go up from the left side, and he misses the layup. He's going to go to the line and shoot two. A good hustle by Dixon after he turned the ball over. He did a good job of trying to get back defensively and tried to set up and take the charge, but got there late. 
Ike was already up in the air, started the shooting motion. He hits the first one. And as, as many turnovers as Marion Local has turned the ball over three times here in the second half, they're only down three with a chance to cut into that lead by two. That point's just such a premium area. Yeah, absolutely. Played almost going on three minutes, and that's the first point of this half. Austin Niekamp with a nice put back there as he corrals the rebound. And he makes it 20-19 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. So Austin Niekamp shows his size there as he gets the put back. Simon tries to go baseline. Kick it back out to Mercer. Mercer with a little dribble drive. And he misses the shot. A lot of hands in the rim there. Here come the Flyers up the right side. That was Luke Pullman as he tries to go in, and he's going to get undercut, and he'll go to the line to shoot two, and chance for Marion Local to take the lead. That's two, two quick fouls on Dixon, played the whole first half very aggressively without getting a foul. And but, Tom, uh, I don't think Marion Local's had the lead since it was two to nothing when Kanapke hit the first bucket of the game. Yeah, they got that quick bucket right down at the rim, and I think you're right. And they still won't <laughs> get a put back here. <laughs> uh, don't, don't rule that one out. Pullman misses that shot. He's got a chance to tie it up here with 5.08 to go in the third quarter. Dixon's going to take a seat with those two quick fouls. I don't believe he was out the entire first half. I don't so think he was. You're we'll right. see if what uh, Marion Local could do down on the block with him on the bench. So Marion Local ties it up here at the 5.08 mark. 20 to 20 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. This is Zion Crow, and he is guarded now by Mitchell Ranley. As Tate Hess has had him most of the game. There's a nice dribble drive off the oh. left side. Boy, Number collided. 12. He collided with his own player following yes, he through. Did. Ricky Powell went down hard. Totally incidental as Ricky Powell was driving the left baseline as Cody Simon was going to the offensive glass, and they just kind of ran into each other after the layup. The trainer's looking at him. Let's hope he's okay because he went down awful hard. That's the first bucket for, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about Springfield's defense. Yes. Uh, they, were, they sat on 20 for a long time, so finally able to get two points on the board. Springfield Shawnee leads 22-20 on the Austin Aldo scoreboard. This is Tate Hess with the ball. Gets it over to Pullman. Back over to Mitchell Ranley. Ranley looking down to Kanapke. Kanapke gets good position, and he knocks it in. Jack Kanapke got really good position. He's got tremendous footwork, Tom, yep. as he moves that ball easily. He, do, he doesn't waste any time. If he's, if he's got an advantage, if he's got you on his hip, he just goes right, catches and goes right to the rim. Makes it 22-22 on the Alton Outdoor Scoreboard. This is Zion Crow. Back out to Desmond Hausman. Haven't called his name much here in the second half. This is Mercer with the ball. Swing it over to Simon. Back to Hausman. Hausman guarded by Kanapke. And there's just nothing for Zion Crow as he is just being taken out of the offensive set. There he does a nice cut down the baseline, and he gets a reverse layup. Zion Crow scores to make it 24-22 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. They're doing work without the ball that time. Hess has done a great job defending yes. him when he has yes. the ball. So there's other ways to score, make a good cut, get yourself in good position. That's what he did there. He averages 21 a game, and Tate Hess has held him to six so far on the night, and we're midway through the third period. Back to Kanapke, and a strong move. That's blocked, though, by Zion Crow, and a great job defensively by Crow to get up and block the shot. Very local, no doubt, especially with Dixon on the bench. They're going right inside, but how about Crow? Giving up some size, but getting that block. Skip pass across the floor, and it goes out of bounds, so yeah, turn two, over there. Two teammates on the opposite side of the floor, but fortunately, he split the difference, threw it right between them, Austin right into the bench. 3.09 to go here in the third quarter. Marion Local down 22-24 to Springfield Shawnee. Danny Holbrook, Tom Von Sossen from Fort Laramie High School, the MLK Classic. After a lot of these games, I'm sure these kids are glad that school's canceled. Yeah, they... <laughs> get a day off to relax. I'm sure they'll practice, but uh, get to sleep in a little bit maybe. Nice hustle there by Marion Local, and their fans let them know that they appreciate the hustle. As you are correct, Tom, points are at a premium right now in 24-22. Uh, and you look at Marion Local and, and Springfield Shawnee, both average 53 and 51 respectively, and we're nowhere near that. No, they're, they're, um, it's a battle. It's hard to get a good look. Uh, Dixon back in the game for Springfield Shawnee. And 
Maybe win. I don't know. If you win, coach might just give you practice off. The <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's, it's been a long weekend. Absolutely. Yeah, it's that time of the year where, where yep. you get to drag a little. It doesn't hurt to, to give them a breather now and then. But. Absolutely. Two twenty three to go here. This is Simon up top, guarded by Nikant. Swings it over to Mercer. Mercer skip pass across the left handed shooter, number twenty four. And I've got to check and see. That's Logan Earls as he checks in the game. Number 24, Logan Earls, the 5'11 junior. We haven't heard much of him today. This is Simon on the left side. Brings it down the middle. Finds Earls down low. Earls back to Zion oh, Crow. And Zion Crow runs the floor and gets rewarded. And he comes up limping. Yeah, he does. He is gimping as he comes up the floor. Nice pass from Earls. A little bounce pass in traffic. Nice job by Tess, or Tate Hess, excuse me, as he goes to the middle, misses the shot. Zion Crow corrals it. And we've got a timeout on the floor with 1.40 to go. Springfield Shawnee will take a timeout. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Here we go back at uh, Fort Laramie High School. Shawnee up 26-22. This is Zion Crow trying to make something happen. Swinging it out top. Find down low. They found number 24, Logan Earls. The left-hander gets the bucket and the foul with a chance to put the Braves up by seven. How about Logan Earls? Did not see action in that first half. Comes in here in the third quarter. First shot from the corner is an air ball from three, but... Then he found Crow with a nice pass and assist, and here a chance for a three-point play. Good minutes, good production. Logan Earls might be the smallest guy on the floor, and right now he is just really playing a nice game. Missed free throw there. Makes it 28-22 with 1.20 to go here in the third quarter. Flyers bring it down on the right side. There's a dribble drive by Tate Hess as he knocks it in. A nice job by Tate Hess of going to the right side, getting the bucket, and he closes the lead to 28-24. Yeah, they needed that. You know, with points being hard to come by, you don't want Springfield to get that thing out to 8 or 10. Zion Crow from the three-point line. Thought about shooting it. This is Simon from the left side. Off the mark, rebound comes down to Hess. Here comes Hess as they're out and running. Get it down to Austin Neekamp. Thought about shooting the three. Back inside to Kanapke, gets position and scores and he's fouled. Jack Kanapke, and that's what he does best. Gets great position down low, takes it up, scores, and he'll go to the line. Yeah, great position, good find from Tate Hess, but Zion Crow would have been better off just to give up the ship and let him have the two. He caught it right at the rim. Kanapke lets it fly, and he knocks it in. All of a sudden, a six-point lead is one. Jack Kanapke's got 12 on the afternoon. He averages 15.3 a game. Well on his way to get that average. 28-27, Springfield Shawnee leads by one. 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Zion Crow with the ball. He'll bring it back up, and they'll reset it. Guarded by Hess, and Hess has done a terrific job on Zion Crow. Thought about the five-second call there, but he moved the ball towards the rim. Dixon out top as he tries to screen Hess for Crow. Crow goes to the foul line, kicks it to the three line. Simon from the right side knocks it in. Cody Simon with the three ball. At the end of three quarters, the Springfield Shawnee Braves lead the Marion Local Flyers 31-27. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School, where after three quarters, the Springfield Shawnee Braves continue to lead the Marion Local Flyers 31-27. Dan, it looks Tom Von Sassen from Fort Laramie High School. And Tom, a big time shot by Cody Simon to end the third quarter. Yeah, it, he just missed one badly on the possession prior to that. He's had some looks tonight, not been able to hit anything, but funny how the brain works sometimes. You know, it's a, you know, time's running down, you have to shoot. Uh, you get in a positive mode, knocked it down. So after the Flyers cut it to one, it's back to four, and Shawnee gets the ball to start the fourth. This is Simon with the ball. Swings it over to Logan Earls, who had a big third quarter for the Braves. 
Crow in the corner, double teamed by the Flyers. And there's a steal there. Nice job by Mitchell Ranley. So he gets the steal, and the ball goes back to Marion Local. Uh, what I'm really impressed with right now, Hom, is you look at Zion Crow, and he's got eight points, but the rest of the team has really stepped up tonight. Yeah, they have. Good balance. Got points from a lot of guys, both starters and bench guys. There's Tate Hess with a nice jumper. It just falls short. Dixon with the rebound. Here comes Crow. Darian Dixon out on the perimeter, guarded by Jack Kanapke. This is Mercer. Mercer tries the dribble drive and wow. an off-balance shot. And Zane Mercer knocks in the little jumper. And they get 33-27 and Springfield pulling away here. And I say pull away because the lead's right, not well, that big. No, but in this game, <laughs> That's right. six, you know, it's one of those games where six is almost like being up 12. And boy, Mercer just throwing it up as he's going to the floor. Austin Neekamp thought about shooting that. They'll swing it back out here. This is Brandon Eink. Eink with a nice dribble drive. Rebound by Kanapke, and Jack Kanapke, the 6'9", big man, knocks it in. He's got 14 on the night, and it's 33-29 with 6.48 to go. That missed shot by Eink was almost as good as a pass because he, he drew the help from, from Jack Kanapke's defender, and when he missed, nobody was there except Jack to finish. Kanapke guarding Dixon out on the perimeter. He'll go back to Simon. He's guarded by Austin Neekamp. Zion Crow, again, Tate Hess has been all over him. He's done a fantastic job of guarding. They're going to run their stuff. No hurry. Can afford to be patient. Crow picks the ball up, and he motioned to his teammates to come help him out there. So a little bit of confusion. There's Mercer from the left side. He misses that shot. Crow with the rebound. He's going to take it back up, and Tate Hess blocks the shot. Nice job by Hess, and he has been Mr. Defense today. This is Neekamp from the three line. Off the mark. Rebound by Kanapke. He goes up strong, and they're going to say Kanapke charge. Yeah, lowers time. his shoulder. <laughs> Different officials, same position, but that time they're going to get the call. He did clearly lean into Dixon after he got that rebound. That's a second foul on Kanapke. That's team foul two on Marion Local. So foul's not an issue right now for either team. No, it's actually getting to the point where you wouldn't mind picking up a couple. Exactly. You get down late and you, and you don't have the lead and you need to put the team at the line. Cody Simon thought about putting that. He's going to go back to Crow. Crow loses the ball. Kanapke picks it up. They'll go back out top to Mitchell Ranley. Get to Tate Hess guarded by Simon. Tate Hess goes to the left side, throws the ball away, but it was touched last by Zane Mercer, and it'll go back to Marion Local. Big break for the Flyers because we had a great view that day. Yes, yeah, that, you're that, right. That was going out of bounds. That was going to be a turnover, but uh, That's a great point. instinctively the Shawnee defender reached up, got a finger on it. Three ball on the way from the top of the key. Off the mark. That was Luke Pullman. What a nice set out of bounds play there as Pullman comes off a screen on the left side, goes from the top of the key. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 5.22 to go. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School, where with 5.22 to go in the game, the Springfield Shawnee Braves continue to lead the Marion Local Flyers 33-29. And Tom, we take a look at both teams defensively. Marion Local gives up 43 a game. Springfield gives up 46, and we're nowhere close to that. And I don't think either team's going to get into the 40s if they continue this. No, it doesn't seem like it because, uh, yeah, I mean, a 4-0 run in this game's been huge. And, and, you know, maybe one of those is going to decide it late, but it's just... Uh, you know, very little easy. Once in a while, Marion Local's been able to get it down in great position to Jack Kanapke for, for an easy look. You know, sometimes it's great to watch two teams that really get after defensively, and both these teams do. Well, it is. I mean, you certainly appreciate not only the effort, but the, the fundamentals and how well they're coached. And Marion Local going to come out with a 1-3 zone look. Saw that a little bit in the first half. Nice job by Crow to find Dixon, cutting to the basket. And Dixon hustles and gets the rebound. It's on the floor. Well, they got to get a timeout. They got to get a job. timeout. Great hustle by Dixon. They got a timeout. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 5:04 to go. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN.
Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School with 5.04 to go here in the fourth quarter. Springfield Shawnee continues to lead Mary Local 33-29. And, Tom, if we take a look at our free throw percentages, if this comes down to a free throw contest, clearly favors Springfield Shawnee at 70% as a team from the line. Mary Local struggles a little bit at 60%. Yeah, that, that could very well be a huge factor. And you know, Mary Local came out of that last timeout and mixed it up with a 1-3-1 one, one look. Shawnee did a great job of attacking and got it down low to Dixon. Got to the center and down to the block. He missed a shot, but great effort to get a hand on that rebound and get it back and call timeout. There's a steal, and Kanapke picks up the loose ball. Finds Tate Hess going down the left side. So here come the Flyers trying to get back in this one. Down four with 4.50 to go. They'll swing the ball around. Jack Kanapke guarded tightly by Cody Simon in the post. They find Kanapke, kicks it back out to Hess. Hess dribble drive. And he knocks it off the front iron. Kanapke tries to grab it. It goes off of a Springfield Shawnee player. Looked like Cody Simon knocked it out of bounds. It'll go back to the Flyers. Springfield that time coming out, mixing it up with a, with a zone look themselves. They're back to man on this inbound. They'll swing the ball out to Mitchell Ranley. Ranley's played a steady game today. He's got three points, but he's been a really good defensive player to handle the ball well. Looking to get the ball into Kanapke. Kanapke guarded by Zion Crow now. So the more athletic Crow is getting on Jack Kanapke. Ranley tries to go baseline. He's got Crow guarding him now. They'll go back to Austin Niekamp, and he knocks it in. Austin Niekamp knocks it in from the left side. Makes it 33-31. Once in a while, it's not how you draw it up. Kind of a disjointed possession there, but fortunate to find knee camp at the hole and he was able to finish and back within two. Here comes Springfield Shawnee going against that Marion local zone and bringing around the perimeter. They've got Zion Crow running in the middle there going to the post. Ball goes out of bounds, go back to Marion local, or goes back to Springfield Shawnee. Back one, in three, one, and that goes back. I'm having nightmares, flashbacks <laughs> to the Jack, Coach Jack Elbers days. Oh, yeah. They would run that defense with three guys that could almost lock arms and touch the sideline to sideline. <laughs> and you knew your two guard wasn't very effective against him, was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a, a near foul out top. They let him play. 3.31 to go. Shawnee leads 33-31. Trying to pull Marion Local out of that zone. Zion Crow swings it to Simon. There's a three ball from the left side. That's going to go off the mark. Rebound by Austin Ekamp. And the Flyers have a chance to take the lead or tie it up. This is Hess with the ball on the left side. He's guarded out top by Desmond Hausman. Hess with the dribble drive on the left side. He's going to go to the line, shoot two, which is huge right now as the clock stops with 3.05 to go. Nice crossover dribble, got to the hole with the left hand, took the contact, unable to get the shot to go, but as you said, to the free throw line. It's been a while since Marion Local's been even in this game. Chance to tie it up. First one on the way, and it's good. So Tate Hess with the free throw. He's got seven on the afternoon, or afternoon, excuse me. I guess we're in the evening hours now. We've been here all day. Yeah. More importantly, the you know, the Flyers have switched to that one through one, and Springfield does not look very comfortable against it. Have not gotten no, they do not, you're right. Not gotten good looks, so we'll see if that could change. So it is tied up now, and it's been a long time since it's been tied up. So with three minutes to go here, we're all not at 33-33 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Zion Crow up top. He's got Cody Simon as his wingman on the right side. They're trying to pull Marion Local out of that big zone. Simon with the ball. Swing it back out. This is Ricky Powell on the wing. Go back into Zion Crow. Gets a nice look. Zion Crow sneaks down low. Gets a nice bucket to give the Braves the 35-33 lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Yeah, got behind that defense, which can be effective against the zone. Get behind him on the baseline. Good find and finish. This is Neekamp guarded by Crow. Neekamp goes to the middle. Little turn around the left side. Up and under. And a nice move by Austin Neekamp. Kanapke tries to bring it in. But it's brought down by Desmond Hausman. So he goes in the middle of the floor. And he is going to be fouled by number 10. Mitchell Ranley out top. Mitchell Ranley. So a great athletic move by Zion Crow to get behind the defense, get the ball, and score. He's got 10 on the night. 
It's the uh, fifth or third team foul for Marion Local, so still a ways from the bonus. This is Crow in the corner. Crow has got to understand that if he picks that ball up in the corner, he's going to be lobbied with a bunch of defenders there as two Marion Local Flyers come right at him. Yeah, you got kneecap on that wing. It's 6'9", a lot of arms and legs coming at you. Swing it back out to Mercer. Mercer, oh, Mercer had Zion Crow cutting, and he throws it away, and it'll go back to Marion Local with 150 to go in the ballgame. Again, Crow trying to get behind that defense, which, you know, zone guards the ball. I mean, their, their eyes are all on the man with the ball, and sometimes you can get behind that zone. We saw it on the previous possession. Looked like they were looking for it there, but missed communication. 1.43 to go, and Coach Gutmuller wants a timeout. So with 1.41 to go, Springfield Shawnee leads 35-33 to right here on WOSN. Back here at Fort Laramie High School with 1.41 to go in the game. Springfield Shawnee continues to lead 35-33 over the Maryland local Flyers. Yeah, just kind of a reset. As you said, Shawnee up by two. Team foul situation. Neither team in the bonus. Springfield has committed four fouls. Marion Local just three. Timeout situation. Springfield, Shawnee has spent four. They just have one remaining. That was the first timeout Kurt Gutmiller has called. So he has uh, almost his full allotment, has four timeouts left yet. And what we haven't mentioned tonight, Coach, is Jaden Mesher, starter for Marion Local, has not seen the floor, and he is hurt. I'm not real sure if his season is over. I know that he got hurt in the ball game the other night, but he has not seen the floor tonight. He is in street clothes. There's a nice dribble drive. Zion Crow with the rebound and a foul. Tate Hess on the call. Well, they got the stop originally, did Springfield Shawnee, and then turned it right back over, and... Branley got to the rim, just laid it up too strong with the left hand. Springfield Shawnee now going to have to go against full court Marion local pressure. This is Simon out top, guarded by Austin Decamp. Swing it back out to Mercer. Mercer finds Zion Crow. Zion Crow guarded by Hess. Crow goes to the left side. Mercer with the ball up top. Swinging around to Simon. Simon thought about going to Dixon down low, but he couldn't get the pass. Zion Crow up top. We are now under one minute to play here. 59 seconds. Crow almost loses it back to Dixon. Dixon's got Kanapke on him. Coach Gutmuller's telling them to foul. Oh, no. Officials a little hesitant to call it. They want to <laughs> pick up some fouls, so if they have to put Shawnee at the line, they, they can do so. That's just their fifth, so... I'm going to call a timeout and talk about timeout it. Coach Gutmuller's going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 49 seconds to go. You're watching high school basketball. WAS. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School with 49 seconds to go. This one's coming down to the wire. Springfield Shawnee leads 35-33. Coach Gutmuller's telling his troops they got a foul because they've only got five team fouls with 49 seconds to go. And they can get very aggressive on this inbound here. Overplay, you know, hold your man a little. If you get a foul called, so be it. That, that's not going to hurt you. If, if not, you get a steal, chance to tie. Shawnee will inbounds the ball. This is Mercer with the ball. Get it into Simon. They're going to foul again out top or try to foul. They're not calling the foul. Mercer gets it to Dixon. We're at 35 seconds. Dixon with the ball. That's a little bit frustrating as a coach. It sure is. And the officials have done a good job, but, I mean, they're clearly trying to foul. And, and the officials know that. And they won't call it. And there, there was some fouls. And they're doing about it the right way. I mean, they're, they're going for the arms. They're not making it look intentional. And you need to give them that call. Now, again, tough inbounds, almost in the corner a little bit. Oh, Mercer gets the ball and throws it away. It's corralled by Marion Local. And it went, oh, no, we got a timeout. Luke Pullman grabbed the ball on the sidelines. It looked like he may have went out of bounds, but they got the timeout before they went out of bounds. We're going to keep it here at 35-33. Yeah, Springfield didn't have much going on that inbound. And, and Mercer actually made a good cut and had gotten around his defender, but pass was a little bit to his left, couldn't quite reach it or Corrali did get his hand on it and then 
Marion Local with a great save, able to come up with it. And now it's their turn to try to tie with the possession, 30 seconds to go. And you now we've kind of flipped things around. Springfield Shawnee with four fouls. Of course, they have the lead. They don't need to foul right now. They just want to play good, solid defense. Are you out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. Tom, you and I can be broadcasting in China. Who knows? <laughs> you never know. It says anywhere anything. in the world. I'll do anything once. That's right. It says anything in the, anywhere in the world. So here come the Flyers down by two. Swing the ball around. This is Hess with the ball up top. Gets a screen from Kneecamp. He's on the right side, guarded by Dixon. Tries to push the ball into Kanapke. Back out to Hess with eight seconds to go. And Coach Gutman was going to call a timeout yeah, with he, eight <laughs> seconds to go. Those four timeouts, he had a little bit of go down to one. But, boy, again, um, Springfield's going to win it. They're going to win it with their defense, as they have all night. And just a great possession there. Marion Local trying to score. It's not like they were holding for a last shot or anything like that. They just couldn't get a good look. They tried to go low to Kanapke, but did a good job of getting their hand on that pass. Almost came up with a steal, did the Braves, but Marion Local able to get possession and now a chance to set one final attempt to tie or win with a three. Coach, with five, with, with 5.22 to go in the fourth quarter, this was a 33-29 game, Springfield Shawnee. Marion Local scored four points and Shawnee scored twice. Yeah. That's it's, unbelievable. It's been really. With 5.29 yeah, to go. All night, just so tough to get a good look and, and, and get a good bucket. And Marion Local's problem here is, you know, certainly their first option is to get the ball down low to Jack Kanapke. But, sure. you know, with eight seconds, that's time to do that. But, it, it, you know, not always. Is, and certainly Springfield's going to be looking to take that away. It may come down to somebody on the perimeter having to make a play going to the rim and creating something off the dribble. And when I say those comments about the score, you would think it wouldn't be a good game, but it's been a fantastic yeah, it game. Has. It has. It so absolutely here comes has. Marion Local with seven seconds to go. This is Hess out top. Gets it over. And oh, oh he, he stepped, stepped out of line. bounds. Luke Pullman steps out of bounds as he gets the shot away with four seconds to go. You know, they decided to go for the win, more or less. They Absolutely. They was going for a three ball for the win. They ran a fade screen and shot came up short anyway, but it didn't matter. So Luke Pullman had the shot on the right side of the floor, and he steps out of bounds. Shawnee's going to take the timeout. So with four seconds to go, Springfield Shawnee continues to lead 35-33. They'll take it out. And obviously, Marion Local's going to have to foul right away. They'll, yeah, they'll well, go for the steal. Sure, but they're going to they're gonna full court deny everyone and, and try to get a steal on the inbounds. That's job one. But if that doesn't happen, as soon as the ball is touched, they've got a foul and send Springfield Shawnee to the line, which the next foul will. That will send him in the one and one. And, and even then, you're only looking at, you know, three, three and a half seconds left. It's going to be a tall order, but they still have a shot. But, you know, the, the ideal scenario would be get a steal on this inbound. Danny Holbert, Tom Von Sossen from Fort Miami High School. We've been here all day for the MLK Classic. Broadcasting three terrific games. This one's going to come down to the wire. Our first one was a fantastic game between St. Mary's and Lexington. And then the host team, Fort Loramy, pulls out a big win over Yellow Springs. And then this one, it's anybody's game right now. Yeah, it really is. I don't even know who what to think. So they're going to have it on the side in front of the Marion local bench. Cody Simon going to trigger. Simon will take it out. Gets it into Dixon. Dixon's fouled immediately by Mitchell Ranley. So Dixon will go to the line. Yeah, of course, if he can make it both, that, that'll do it. For the, you know, They can just get out of the way then, they being the Braves. Dixon's but, got six on the night. You're right. If he knocks both of these in, it's over. Marion Local does have one timeout, so we'll see. If they rebound a miss here, they may choose to call that timeout. And, Try to set something up with a longer pass coming up the floor. Both big guys come back in. They were out for that defensive possession. Neat Camp and Kanapke back on the floor. First one on the way, and he misses it. Rebound comes down to Kanapke, and they're going to take a timeout with 2.8 seconds to go. 
going to be a tough one. Can you get it to half court and call a timeout? Well, we know. Yeah, he's got one timeout. What? No, he's got no timeouts left. No, he's he has got no. None. Yeah, he's got none. We know Tate Hess could throw a pass, right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we do. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, maybe even a better look than going for the three is maybe just try to throw it to one of the big guys or throw it to Kanapke in the middle of the lane, length of the court, and see if he's able to come up and get a catch and turn and score. A la Christian Leitner, maybe? There you go. <laughs> Of course, the hard part of that is to throw something accurate from right, 75, right. 80 feet. Not an easier said than done. And these are things that, uh, you know, this is Thursday afternoon, end of practice when you go through these special sure. special situations and you have a play. You're not just trying to make something up on the fly. You have a play or two that, that are for these situations. Eight seconds to go. Marion Local will take it out underneath Springfield Shawnee's basket. They'll have to go the length of the floor with 2.8 seconds. There'll be no more timeouts in regulation anyway. Both teams are out. Brandon Eink will trigger the ball inbounds. Throws it the length of the floor, and it's going to be corralled. Austin Niekamp with a three, and he misses the shot. And that's it. The buzzer goes, or did it. No foul at all. Yep, that is it. it. That's the end of the game. Springfield Shawnee, the Braves, win this one 35-33. Tom, your final thoughts. I think they've got to feel good about that. And, uh, you know, coming in here and, and playing a 9-1 Marion local team and, and defending like they did. I mean, they just played fantastically hard and aggressive, and they deserved it. Absolutely. And that'll do it. Fort Laramie High School here at the MLK Classic. Springfield Shawnee knocks off Marion Local 35-33 for Tom Von Sauce. And I'm Danny Holbrook and our entire WSUN group. We'll see you down the road.